students NRS scores with A Tutor for Casas and A Tutor for Tabe. My name is Karen Ruiz. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and get started. Please make sure that you put all of your questions into our chat pod or our question pod so that we could uh, make sure that those are answered. Did I say January? I meant July. My goodness, I am so over July. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, if you do see anything that you would like more questions about in regards or have more questions about in regards to our products or our services or any of the functions, please reach out to your field service rep or your sales rep. Uh, here is a list of our Aztec uh, family of companies or family of products. Please, if you do have any questions, make sure you reach out to, again, a service rep or a sales rep. You can also go to aztecsoftware.com to find more information. And so what we're going to be talking about today is really those NRS assessments and how to make those measurable skills gains, our alignment to our Aztec products, and then some of the new items that we have available that will assist you and your students in making those measurable skills gains. So first and foremost, because, you know, as a classroom teacher, this is something I hear quite a bit as I'm wandering around on to different campuses or talking with different teachers, even on my own site, I hear this regularly, you know, those NRS assessments, like, why are we taking them? What is the point? And so we really need to have a better understanding, I think, as educators on our campus, as to why we give those NRS assessments, because not only do we as the teachers and instructors and educators need to know that, but it also helps to understand that information so we can pass it on to our students because it makes those assessments more valuable. And if they understand the benefit and the necessity of the assessments, they're more likely to do better on those assessments. So it really is important to be able to answer that question of why do I have to take this test in a clear way for your students so they, they you know, then try a little bit harder to do better rather than just rushing through it so they can get to their actual academic goals. If you can share with them that the two are aligned, that really does help everybody involved. You know, in addition to our using them for measurable skills gains, we use those NRS tests for placement in our ESL, ABE, and HSE programs, also our HSD programs. On my site, we also then use them as academic skill prerequisites for our CTE programs. And then in addition to that, we use those NRS exams, those benchmarks or post-tests to track student academic growth. You know, we want to see if they're showing gains. We also use them for individualized educational plans. And so it's really important that we understand, like, what are skill gains? What are those measurable skill gains? We talk about MSGs. I actually have a teacher friend who is allergic to the sodium-based MSGs. So she was a little like off-put when we were talking about this in campus. But it really is important for us to understand what those are. So when we talk about those NRS levels, they come from the Educational Functioning Levels or EFLs. They were developed by OCTE, which is the Office of Career and Technical Adult Education. And they really do guide our teaching and any other assessment of our adult education learners. They do come from the CCRS or College and Career Readiness Standards both for language arts and then also for math. And as you can see here, you can see what those foci are, both as reading and writing for the language arts and then math, it's organized in different practices and then different concepts as well. But either way, those NRS concepts or NRS descriptors really give examples of the most critical concepts and skill levels for each of those levels. And so let's go to the next slide here. So when we look at those measurable skills gains or MSGs, you know, on my site as the teacher, we hear all the time from our 
administrators, like we want to make those MSGs, we want to make those MSGs. And so again, we have to make sure that, you know, our staff really understands what those are. Those, and that top piece is that educational functioning level gain. So being able to make gains, there's a variety of different ways to show those. But again, one of those is making that level increase on an NRS exam. And so there are others as well, of course, you know, uh, we all know uh, obtaining those secondary high school diplomas, either the HSD or actually the uh, high school diploma itself or our GED or high set completion. Uh, we have that credential attainment. And so all of those are our MSGs. And, you know, our staff just really needs to be aware of aside from earning those high school diplomas and high school equivalency exams, you know, what does that mean with the EFL with our NRS exam? And so, you know, making sure that they understand that, this is an example from nrsweb.org that clearly aligns like what those testing benchmarks are, what those increases can look like either from a TABE test or a CASAS test or that mapped test if you're not a TABE or CASAS site. So those are uh, state specific. And so just making sure that your staff really does understand like those scores because they are different for reading than they are for math. And of course for TABE, there's also language arts. So really, you know, going over that with your staff each year or each term. So they do have that kind of in the back of their head as they're working with their students. So we're really gonna focus on CASAS and TAVE today. We are not going to be focusing on MAPT, just to keep that in mind, but those are our two mostly um, used, uh, exams that are used most often. And this is one of my favorite quotes in regards to standards because both of those tests, of course, are standards-based. This comes from aligning CASAS competencies and assessments to basic skills content standards from the CASAS website. And this is true really with any content standards, be they CASAS or TABE or CCRS, CCSS, and I'm sure also true with MAPT, that those standards are not useful unless they're actually being used in the classroom. And so in order for us to be using those in the classroom, you really need to provide your staff with proper professional development and regular reminder, uh, refreshing professional development in regards to those content standards, whatever you're utilizing on your campus. So this is CASAS. We're gonna go over that just briefly. If you look at the standards here, we have our content standards in the big boxes. Each one has you know, a, a code. Here you can see the code is uh, reading 2.7. But you can also see that you know the CASAS standards, they come from the CCRS or CCASS, depending on how you look at that. And so when you are looking at these CASAS standards, if you're a site that's also focusing on those CCRS or CCSS standards, you can see they're also part of those CASAS standards. So reading 2.7 is also listening point five, A, B, and C, or reading four, uh, C, D, and E at the different levels in our college and career readiness standards. So you can see that, you know, a lot of folks say, well, the CASAS standards, they don't really mean anything to me, but they actually come from the CCRS. So if you have an understanding of those CASAS standards and you're using the CCRS, maybe because you need to, to be in alignment with your school district, you can say, okay, I can see how they're related. I can see how they correlate to one another. So I can speak both languages. And you can see, you know, clear understanding of that information here. These are the language arts standards or the reading standards. They're broken down into five different categories. Those categories are separated then also by NRS levels, either for ESL or ABE ASC. And the same is true for math, except for our math standards are only for ABE and ASC, but they still are broken down into those five different categories, number sense, algebra, geometry, and measurements, statistics, et cetera. And then if we look and transition over to our TABE standards, TABE standards are CCRS based as well. 
You can find them on the blueprints, which are on tabetest.com, the website. If you go to resources and then click on tab 1112, you'll see a link for the blueprints, which look like this. What's really great about these blue, blueprints, because I'm a very visual learner, is I can see you know, what percentage of this level A math test is geometry. And so it's highlighted both in the pie chart as well as in the category off to the left here. And then the columns will explain those standards and what domain they come from. You can see that for this test, there's multiple pages and it shows again, which categories and the percentage of that test that are covered with that category. And so what I do really appreciate about this is that it does say, not only is this standard included in this test, but it also explains to you or lets you know like, oh, this is a highly seen or highly relevant to this test level this specific standard so you would know okay i really need to focus on this standard or maybe this standard is a low uh standard in this test and so maybe i would just you know not need to spend as much time making sure that our students are really focusing and grasp these concepts when the students then take that tabe test they get a performance report and what I really like about these performance reports is that they're going to explain for both the student who took the test and also for the instructor, the demonstrated skills and also the areas for next uh, focus or next improvement. So, you know, based off that, that furthest column on the right in red, I've blown that up for y'all. So if this were the report for my student, I would look at these two uh, key points here, key ideas and details, and craft and structure, and make sure that my students really do have an understanding of these skills. And if like the rest, like if the rest of the class is struggling like this student in particular, or if I were creating an individual learning plan just for the student, we would focus on these specific skills for our lessons, for our Aztec work, for remediation, etc. That that would be where I would see the most gains if I could assist my student in uh, improving on these skill levels. So before I move forward, do we have any questions about the standards? You're good, Karen. Okay, let's keep going. So let's talk a little bit about what the A Tutor series is. So the A Tutor series is targeted, tar excuse me, targeted instruction for test success. And you know, it really was something that we worked on through the pandemic because we had, you know, we had the A Tutor series already in print, but we saw that a lot of our, our students and we heard from a lot of our instructors that during the pandemic they needed more ways to get the material to their students. And a lot of sites were not checking books out to students or making books available to their students. And so you know, we took our product, which as you can see here, has, you know, proven instruction that's clear for our students. It's very concise content. It's aligned to either the CASAS goals test or the TABE 1112 test. So they're the mo most up-to-date content because it's all aligned to that updated content. For those of you that are CASAS folks, you know that our content is being our, our CASA's goals tests are being updated and we're looking at doing those updates. Uh, TABE is, is being rumored we're getting updates. It's going to be updated and we're prepped and ready for that to occur so we can work on that um, curriculum and updating it as well. But it really, with that digital version, really does allow our instructors to then monitor our student progress more so than I would say with a book uh, just because you know, you are able to run those reports rather than gathering that data yourself. It's, I love that our platform does that for us. Um, so that's one of the benefits of the platform, um, the digital platform that we do have that online and updated information um, and data for you on the students learning. I also appreciate that they have those assessments. It provides feedback, not only to the instructors, but also to the students. There's very specific targeted practice because you can take the standards codes 
and use those to look up key lessons and activities for a student to uh, practice on and to remediate on if they need to remediate with an entire level and do all of the material or all of the activities, that's certainly an option. But for students that just need to go back and have little refreshers on this, that, and the other thing, then the instructor can then, then certainly assign those or make just those activities available to the students. So it does really give them some additional increased in-depth preparation on those very specific top topics. And we have found then that that it allows for our students to have increased improvement on their MSGs at a much rapid, uh, more rapid rate. And we really do like that. And we've heard from many people out in the field that they like having the options of having the books in the classroom and also having the content available online for students to work on who either couldn't be in class or want some additional practice as homework or you know want some additional practice using a computer versus a book because that's how they take those tests when they actually take their official tests so we've heard a lot of different positive feedback in regards to the online versions of both of those programs so again, if you look at the CASAS, a tutor for CASAS materials, and you can see in my upper left-hand corner that I have a little table there that just gives those a tutor for CASAS levels, or I'm sorry, the CASAS levels as they are aligned to the NRS levels. Uh, but you can see from the books below that our A tutor for CASAS is just for our B, C, and D level. We do recommend for that A level, which is that beginning ABE literacy or basic levels, that we that you would use something else for those, something like our fundamental skills levels or our fundamentals online digital program, uh, just to give the students, you know all of the support they need in order to be really successful at that A level. And then you would transition them into that B level uh, for the A tutor for CASAS once they were um, finished getting all of those skills at that A level. For our A tutor for TABE, it's uh, set up very similarly. And again, you can see from the table on the left, the different NRS levels as they correlate to our TABE levels. And so you can see here that, again, like the A tutor for CASAS, that we are, we have A tutor for TABE at the E, M, D, and A levels. And then we would similarly suggest for that beginning ABE literacy, a beginning basic level of NRS 1 and 2, or TABE level L, that you would work with our fundamental skills, print materials, or our fundamental and foundation level online digital materials. So let's look a little bit closer at the A Tutor series, and we're going to start by looking at the print materials. Do we have any questions before I move forward? You're good. Okay. So for either A Tutor for CASAS or A Tutor for TABE, for our print materials, those units, they are aligned to the student books. Um, what I really like about the student edition versus the workbook is that they're also aligned to each other. So I've seen lots of teachers who teach with the student edition in class and then assign materials or activities from the workbook for homework and the lessons have the same name they have the same number so it's really e easy for the students to then you know transition from one to the other without having to remember page numbers and, and things which are of course different we have a uh, practice we have instruction i love that the student edition has guided practice um it has instruction in it it has uh, even a unit review. And so during the pandemic, uh, when I was using that student edition, if I wasn't able to give that student direct instruction, you know, the instructions on the page for the students really then did help that student understand those concepts without needing me if I wasn't available. Uh, the workbook also has practice 
you know, the books have different numbers of pages depending on the subject area, but for the most part, the student editions will have two pages of practice and the workbooks will have four pages of practice. That's different for the language arts just because, you know, the reading resource material <laughs> takes up more space. And so we want to make sure our students have plenty of practice with all of those uh, resource pages that have, you know, uh, different content for the students to read and answer questions about. So what I also love about the books is that they have answers and explanations at the back of both books. So it's not just an answer key, but every single question then also has an explanation. And so I train my students to go through and read those explanations regardless of whether or not they got the answer right because they will still gain more information from those answer keys quote unquote so i tell them it's always so much more than just an answer key those explanations are gold and they really need to focus on those as well here's just some sample pages and you can see here clearly written lesson five and of course this says at the top this is from the student edition what I love about this is that the workbook would have the same lesson five and also the title solve word problems. It has a great explanation as to what the student is going to be working on up in the corner too. you'll have that standard. So for me, when I was looking at reports for my students and trying to figure out what lessons they should work on. I would just go and look for those codes and then say, okay, so this, these are the pages, these are the lessons my students need to work on based on those CASAS content standards. And the same is true for the TABE books as well. They do have those codes up there for TABE. Here's an example and an explanation, kind of a step-to-step -step how to. And again, there's more practice, there's more guided practice for the students to again show them like, okay, Here's how you're gonna do the problem. We're gonna explain it or the guided practice. This is a question that looks just like the one on the test, but there's also an explanation down at the bottom so they don't have to you know, flip back and forth to the back of the book as they're trying to learn these new concepts. And there's tons of little like post-it notes and strategy boxes to give them additional information. On the actual practice pages, those practice pages, the, the questions look exactly like they would see on those CASAS or TABE tests. And that really does help the students kind of get used to the formula of those tests so they can kind of feel a little bit more ready and more prepared and more used to that format when they actually get in to take those tests. Again, here is that answer and explanation page. And you can see in here that it does have those questions, the correct answers right next to the number of the question, but then it also has the content standard. It has an explanation, and this is a sample from the CASAS book. It also has that CASAS competency as well. So not just that standard, but also that life skill if you wanted to focus in on a certain life skill from that CASAS competency. From the student edition, here's just some more practice as well. And so we're going to look next at the EPUB version of that. Do we have any questions on the print? No questions. Okay. So let's look at our EPUBs. EPUBs are available as individual, organizational, or on the Aztec EPUB platform. So that means that you could either have the students work on it on an iPad as just a separate individual license or you would be able to put it on your EPUB, on Canvas or Moodle, or that you would also be able to have your students access it through the uh, Aztec e platform itself. And so if you look here, here's our platform, um, and you can see that this is on the student side, this is in their bookshelf, and they would be able to just click on any of those books in the bookshelf and then access it e easily. This makes it very easy for a student who's working, let's say, in GED to also have access to materials for CASAS remediation. They would just go to that bookshelf, click on that title, and then be able to get into the book. It's easy navigation because rather than having to flip next page to, let's say, Unit 3, Lesson 12 at the back of the book, they would just be able to go to that index over on the left and click on whichever lesson they needed to go to. 
They can bookmark those lessons, which I've seen lots of teachers use like, hey, go into Aztec before we leave for the day, bookmark lesson 12, because that's what we're gonna have you do for homework tonight and I'll see you all tomorrow. Or we just finished lesson 11, I'm gonna have you do lesson 12 at home as our flipped lesson. So you get kind of a review before we start working on lesson 12 tomorrow in class. There's also a place for students to take notes. The instructor can see notes and those pages aren't stagnant. The students can also answer their questions on the pages there and the teacher can go back and review them. The uh, student can also go back and review them as well. And then we're gonna flip real quickly into the digital piece. So A Tutor for Casas and A Tutor for Tape are both available on the digital platform. This makes it really easy for students to be able to work on the materials as they like or as they need um, in the same on the same platform so they're not switching from one platform to a different or from one thing to another everything is all inclusive which really helps some of our students who struggle with navigating from one thing or another from one tab to another you can see here that the lessons have the same names um, lesson a uh, level a lesson number one so it does really make it easier for the students to kind of navigate through the materials. And again, if you're teaching from the book at home, that they would be able to then utilize the activities on the online platform to either support what they learned in class or to introduce what they're gonna learn in class tomorrow. Um, that platform, having all of this available on the platform really does assist your students and add just more depth and more information, more opportunities for them to learn and to practice the skills that you teach. It's set up like all of our other Aztec uh, programs. We have the pre-test, you have lessons and drills to be used as you know formative assessments, and then you have that post-test as our summative assessment for that unit. So with that, do we have any questions from the group that I can add? No or questions. We've answered them all in the chat. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for joining us. And again, uh, you will be receiving your certificate email uh, very soon. Please make sure that you click on the blue a uh, link in order to generate your certificates. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to having you in our webinar next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.